Can you hear the rain? I love the rain. It's also why I'm not filming outside right now. It was going to be really beautiful, but the wall. Welcome. I'm Carolyn Quincy, and this is hopefully going to be my YouTube channel. I have wanted to start a YouTube channel for a very long time. I am an artist of many different disciplines. I really want to share various projects with the world. I have found a lot of solace in YouTube videos. I didn't have the internet my entire life basically until a year ago and so I have found that I can turn on YouTube and put on some ambience and work for hours. And so I hope that you find my channel to be a place where you can come and you know, sip your tea or coffee and just relax or become inspired or learn something new. I welcome any and all feedback. I have no idea what I'm doing. I didn't even know how to edit a video until a couple of weeks ago. I don't have a working computer. I have my tripod on a stack of pillows right now with my selfie light and my desk lamps. Um, so any and all feedback is welcome. I really want to create a very magical place. Uh, I love fantasy and I want to incorporate lots of different themes into my channel but I really want it to kind of have that core fantasy base because I feel like that's where my core is rooted. Uh, a lot of my projects I want to be inspired by magical beauty and fantasy creatures and that kind of thing. For my first project I want to create a chocolate frog. It's very last minute. It was supposed to be done days ago by the way, join my Patreon because they've seen the behind the scenes of this and I will be putting extra information on my Patreon and just in general, it's a great way to support an artist if you care to support an artist. <laughs> I began by combining Sculpey Bake Shop in brown with equal parts of Sculpey 3 in chocolate. Polymer clay is thixotrophic. Much like our muscles and our connective tissues in our bodies, the more you work it and the more warm it is, the more pliable it becomes. I worked it for several minutes before it was the right consistency to get started. I started out by making this little guy just pinching off pieces. I thought that this was a good way to start, but after I got a little further along and became increasingly unhappy with his shape, I went back to the drawing board, so to speak. Creating an armature with aluminum foil is a good way to help save clay as well as to have a sturdy interior. I drew these sketches from looking at some stock photos on a site that I'll link below. I started out by looking at frog skeletons and then moved on to looking at fully fleshed out frogs so that I could get the base of the shape that I was going for first and then build on. I started the feet by making just these flat bases. Then I made a long thin rope of clay and I cut pieces that were the appropriate size for each of the toes that I would need. 
Then I laid them on top and smoothed them down, cutting between each toe to take the base out, leaving a little bit of webbing in between. Now to create the food safe silicone mold. I used Amazing Mold Putty. I began by combining equal parts of side A and side B. I actually used more than was needed. I had to work quickly as there's only about three minutes worth of time where this is pliable before it sets up. This is definitely something that I would have done a little bit differently if I had actually had more experience with this, but I've only ever made one silicone mold in this manner before. Once you get it combined and mush it together, now see I would have smoothed out those lines if I had paid more attention, you roll it over your mold and pressing into all of the details. And this is actually too thick here and off camera I make one that is thinner uh, with about half of this amount of silicone and I especially pay attention to the thinness under the chin right there so that I can completely flip it inside out when I demold it and that way it really allows for the head to come out without too much trouble. Here, I accidentally pulled the mold away from the toes a little bit, causing a distortion that I ended up having to fix by mushing it down and fiddling with it even more. I mushed the silicone in between the toes and really smoothed it over where it met the body so that everything was nice and congruent when I put it down and mushed it down so that I would have a nice flat base on the bottom of my chocolate frog once it was cast. The silicone only has to set and cure for 20 minutes before it is firm and ready to demold. I really tried to take my time with this because I did not want to break off any of those little toes. It was also much more difficult to demold as the silicone was too thick. But eventually, patience and persistence paid off and I got it out in one piece. I went back in around the toes and trimmed with some small scissors. In a double boiler over one inch of simmering water, I added a random amount of dark chocolate chips. Chocolate frogs are made of 70% croco, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's croak and cocoa combined. The croco is what gives them their liveliness. Being as I did not have any on hand, my frogs are much more sedate. When melting chocolate, be sure to keep it moving constantly over low heat. It will burn very quickly. Added a pinch of salt as that makes it even more delicious and removed my bowl from the heat and put on a towel before it was completely finished melting and continued to smooth the chocolate until it was ready. I have two molds here, the one I made on camera and one that I made off camera, which was slightly thinner and ended up working better. I filled it with my chocolate, trying to get in all the nooks and crannies, but I did end up still having a couple of air bubbles in there. I filled in the toes completely with chocolate here, but when I took it out of the mold, they ended up breaking off. In my second attempt, I only fill in about half of the feet, leaving the tips of the toes empty, and I was able to unmold that without any trouble. 
As you may have noticed, I've got two different houses that I'm representing here in my pajamas. What house are you? Can you guess what I am? All right, then I just cleaned off the edge of the mold and popped it into the refrigerator. After giving it ample time to set up, I carefully took it out of the mold by first peeling away the edges and then I turned it upside down and this is where my frog lost his toes, but they were delicious. In my second attempt, in which I was able to keep the feet, I did not turn it upside down and use pressure against the table or the plate in order to demold. And here are our finished chocolate frogs. As you can see in the first footless frog, I took better care to avoid air bubbles than in the second version. This pentagonal box was inspired in shape by the movie box, but I wanted to take my own creative liberties with it, and I created it from scratch without a protractor, so it's not perfect, but I do have process photos from this available on my Patreon. Thank you for joining me on this adventure back to Hogwarts. I hope your friend Ron hasn't saved you the trouble of eating all of your chocolate frogs. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I've talked too long. I go on and on. Or I don't say enough. Or both. But I did my makeup for this, so I feel like I should say more.